Welcome, welcome, welcome to the room. <laughs> hey guys, it's your girl Raquel May David. We I got a new microphone, and needless to say, it's not acting right. Okay, so we're gonna make this, we're gonna make this work on the back end. But for those of you that are new to the room, my name is Raquel May David. I am your hostess with the most it's with my amazing co-host David Sanchez. We were what? Meant to be. Um, so we are here to help you and to talk about the world's most advanced and effective AI credit repair software by the name of Dispute Panda. We normally allow the first 10 minutes or so for everyone to have an open floor. So if you guys have questions, concerns, this is an open floor for you to ask those questions. I love when people come on camera. Hey, Francesca. Is that Francesca? I think that's how I said it. Welcome, welcome to the room. How are you? Let me just see what I'm watching here. So if anyone has any questions, concerns, or comments, please feel free to come off of mute, drop it in the chat. I'm actually opening the chat while we are uh, conversing today. Stop one. Um, keep it off here. Open the chat. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments while we are allowing some other folks to get into the room, um, it is you guys have the opportunity to. Hey, can welcome. Yes. Okay. Let me turn this down because I can barely hear you and my audio is all the way up. Hold on. Let me see what's going on. Okay. So um uh I'm in that group where if we fill out those um at that paperwork where they keep calling you or like one of the um uh, like the credit places keep calling you about your um what you owe so i sent them a message a couple of days ago and it seemed like nobody was reaching out but then unfortunately now i i do have somebody that's reaching out mm -hmm. and, and they um they uh, she was rude, so um, she just wanted me to um, tell her if I was going to pay her. Oh, so you're but, saying a collection agency is reaching out to you? Yes, yes, yes. Got it. It hadn't been so. Um, there, and when I caught when I sent a text to the credit team, I was like kind of getting despondent because I started in June of last year. And my credit score went up like 60 points. And then now it's dropped all the way down. Okay. So I'm just like, I, I got to get this fixed, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else to do. So I guess I just have to send in that information or something. So I'm not quite sure what, okay. So let me make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. Because I want to make sure I answer the question appropriately. So you're saying a third-party company Mm -hmm. reached out to you and was calling about the credit about the collections that you have with them correct yes yes okay and what was your follow-up question to us is that you guess um, you what so a couple of a few days ago nobody was calling at first and then I sent that text because I was getting discouraged you know well nothing's happening my credit score is still low and then all of a sudden couple of days later after the fact that I sent it they um started calling so should I just like fill out this paper paperwork that they sent me um from Dave and my the debt collection communications log so that's a great question but I don't know who those are so I want to make sure that we're on the right call so this call tonight is for the dispute panda software you have the dispute panda software correct yeah okay so th the question that you asked is specifically about your file and that's a little bit outside of the call today so i'm gonna have to give oh. you like a like a broad answer and okay. then we're gonna kind of okay. dive in so if you want to i will drop my link so if you okay. want to book a call for us to go over your specific file we yeah. can uh, okay. But on this call today, just for transparency, guys, for this call today, we're going to be covering the software. I'm going to go over the pricing. I'm going to go over the training material. I'm okay. going to go over how you can get help with customer service. We're going to set up an account, and then we are going to load a client in, and we're going to do a free round of disputes. 
During the process, okay. I do go over what my consultation conversation kind of looks like, not the whole thing, but a portion of what I discuss with my clients. If you are wanting support with your specific file, like, hey, I have questions on what should I do with my file? I do have, um, for the Dispute Panda community, I do have a one-on-one -on -one consultation that you guys can book. And there are um, there are group nights where I will drop a Zoom link in the community. I, did, I just did one the other day where I dropped a Zoom link in the community. And I was like, hey, if you guys have questions, I'm working files for the next couple of hours. Jump on in, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, but- I would need to know more information. So just to recap okay. for the people that are just coming on the phone, um, the que sorry, just coming on the Zoom, the question that um, our wonderful team member was asking was, hey, I didn't see any movement. Um, I did see 60, 60 point increase and then my scores dropped and I didn't really see any movement thereafter. I was kind of getting discouraged and now I don't know what I need to do. So to answer your question broadly, there'd be several factors. So number one, what flow are you using and what round of disputes are you at right now? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll have to get with you um, on a separate uh, thing because I because like you said I think this has something to do with um, the credit team which I thought it you know it's not dispute panda but they had it at we had it at first but now they're going through some attorneys um, so I don't know if I'm saying this or not but I'll get with you Raquel yeah and so you do have the dispute panda software yes yes and you have been sending out letters on your own file is that correct this is safe space that's the safe space Oh, at first we did, we started okay. and, and um, they found out that um, the attorney uh, for somehow another Craig, uh, Dave and, and Mike or whatever his name is, they found out that, okay, so like the attorney said that if the creditors keep calling you after you sent the letter, then there's a chance that you could actually turn around and sue the creditor right. and possibly get a thousand dollars, but it'll be for like each creditor. So the only creditor I have that keeps reaching out to me is these attorneys. So um, that's where so, I am. So, so I want to make sure I'm asking the right question. So you have dispute Panda and you okay. have been sending dispute Panda letters on your own. Is that correct? Um, they helped me in the beginning. Who's they? I'm so sorry. Let, let, who's uh, the, the credit the the credit team? Which you know, credit? so you know, um, maybe I'm talking too much. <laughs> um, so okay. you know, the the credit team on uh, YouTube, uh, Dave and Mike Cousins. Oh, okay. I love them. Okay, okay. So Dave and Mike Cousins was helping you. Okay. So yeah. the only reason why I'm asking is because a lot of people get this question, like, what do I do? And the letters are a, a great foundation, but there are there is a duality with credit repair. And that's why I kind of cover some of it as we're going through the process to know what's going on. Now, if you're needing support outside of just the letters that are going out, mm -hmm. there's there's a series of questions I have to ask. So that's why I was asking, what round okay. are you on? Because if you sent out the letters, I would need to know how many letters have you sent out, right? Because depending on what round you're in, did mm -hmm. you send out a cease and desist? Did you send out a do not contact? Like those are the layered questions that we kind of have to okay. ask to nice. kind of zone in. So if if you if you can't get to to Dave and Mike, I did drop my uh consultation link in the chat so you can always book me and okay. it'll be my pleasure to go ahead and go through and kind of like dive into your specific profile to be okay. able to answer. But hang tight because as we go through, I'm going to be giving away little tips and little tidbits that might be able to help you in your situation as you're going through the process. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. You are amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank y'all for all of y'all that pulled up. Thank you for y'all that got your cameras on. Before I start any questions, I'm going to give y'all four more minutes. Does anyone else have any of the questions except for Miss, uh, is it Frances is it Francesca? Did I say it right? Oh, uh, Francesca. Francesca? Mm -hmm. 
I got a question. Can I can I ask you a question? No, it costs two dollars and fifty eight. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you only get one free, one free. Now I'm joking. What's your question? I got a client. Um, she have credit dino, but she also got the free um credit coma, uh, monitoring system. So I done a, a um a dispute on her about two weeks ago, and she checked the credit coma score, and it went up ninety eight points. Uh, um, TransUnion, then it went up. Fifty something points on the um, Equifax, uh -huh. but I still, but I still see the accounts there, probably because I never refreshed it on a Dino credit Dino. You're only uh, refreshing your client's credit report every thirty five days. Every thirty five days, yes. Correct. So, so speak. I, go ahead. What's you your question? Go ahead. I, I go, go ahead. ahead. It it had to go off for a reason. Ninety eight points. Some had to drop off. That's a, that's a dramatic move upward. It's possible. So so here's what I like to say is I educate my clients because I have clients that do that as well, where they have multiple credit monitoring softwares. Uh -huh. And when you're dealing with other softwares like like Credit Karma and things of that nature, they update mm -hmm. the profile every seven to 10 days. So every seven to 10 days, there's adjustments mm -hmm. being made with those adjustments mm -hmm. being made. Accounts could fall off. Accounts could be updated. Please remember, remove does not mean deleted. Remove just means being investigated. Delete means that it's been completely taken off the profile, right? But when you're going through the process, what we want to educate the client is you can leverage that information for alerts, any changes, any fluctuations. But the only number we are going to focus on is either going to be the credit dyno number or the number uh -huh. specifically on myfico.com. Personally, gotcha. because myfico.com gives you the full like FICO scores for all of the actual FICO mm -hmm. departments. So from two, four, five, you know, all of the things, eight, eight nine, ten. Um, right? However, Credit Dino is a software that we're personally using. So you are correct. There could have been something that would be, that was removed. But the only way for you to see that while you're waiting that 35 days is for her to mm -hmm. send you her login for that particular system or for her to forward you the emails of the updates that she's receiving. I did. I, and she done it. And I didn't see nothing. Nothing removed. changed. Yeah. Nope. And I, and I, I never get impression. I never pay attention to that because when it comes to, especially with credit karma, if so, if something gets added, like a sentence, like a dispute right. comment is added, That's what I it, think it, it is. will decrease the score. Right. If yeah. the if the comment is removed, it'll increase the score. That ain't got nothing to do with the Dagmo score. That ain't right. calculate the score. So that's right. why I never really gotcha. count. Just say, oh, I'm I'm glad that that's what you see, but we're gonna yeah. wait till 35 right. days to look at the credit dino profile. Gotcha. Gotcha. Great question. Great question. Gotcha. So you only got your one? Yeah, yeah that's all I had. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> 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 right. He was like, I got one question. I'm joking. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> come into the room. Does anyone have any additional questions before I deep sea dive into today's questions? I don't see anything um, in the chat. Uh, all right, cool. So real quick, I like to shamelessly plug the Dispute Panda Community website. The reason that I shamelessly plug that is because y'all, if you guys are looking for help, support, it is literally here on the website. But most importantly, I personally drop in stuff in there all the time. So sometimes if I have an open Zoom room and you guys might have a session where you want to just ask a few questions and it's not on a dispute panda night, a lot of times I'm working files Saturdays and Sundays. So it might be a little bit more flexible because you guys are sitting at home and needing, you know, just kind of like playing with stuff. So if if you guys need some additional support, you can definitely dive in. And I normally drop if I'm opening up a workroom in the community specifically for the people in Dispute Panda so I can support you guys. So definitely join the community. Our wonderful moderator, JM, is always on here. And as you guys know, the Dispute Panda support team is 24 hours a day seven days a week. So that means if you do have a question to dip and do, they will be the, the ones to be able to support accordingly. My uh, wonderful team member, David, has gone ahead and dropped the link. So if you guys are not a part of the community, please go ahead and sign up now. All right. So wanted to go ahead and get started. We are going to cover just some quick topics that are at the top. I like to be very clean and direct with what we're going over today. So we are going to cover pricing. We're going to cover training and contact. The pro, the calculator, and the integration, we will dive into once we get to the actual platform and we've created our dummy account. So this way you can kind of see 
all of the things that are pivoting and moving within the software. And that way, if you have questions, I can actually demonstrate them in real time over there. All right. So this, I'm going to start off at pricing. The pricing that I want to talk about is that this is the first software I found that is pay as you go, which means most of the credit monitor or the credit repair softwares that are out there, you are having to pay $42, $27, $37 per month. And then whatever the rounds are for the actual letters, you're paying for that as well. With Dispute Panda, the software itself is free, free 99, free 50 cents. Free. Well, not 50 cents, because 50 cents be doing too much trolling on these webs. But anyway, anyway, I digress. It's free. Okay. So when you're coming to the software, if you are not using Credit Dino, and I'm going to show Credit Dino later, Credit Dino is our um, credit monitoring software that was built specifically for the Dispute Panda software. With Credit Dino, you do get a free round of attacks for all three credit bureaus as um, and if and you have the ability to get the static letters to the secondary bureaus, okay? With that being said, um, if you do not use Credit Dino, so your client is using Smart Credit, Identity IQ, or you're using Smart Credit, Identity IQ, MyScore IQ, you are charged $17 per round of attack that you're doing. So every month you come in and the only thing that you're paying is the $17 for the attacks. Now, I'm going to tell you while we're going through this, y'all, what my favorite parts of this of the Dispute Panda software is. If you didn't know about it, hallelujah, let's go. If you did know about it, well, welcome to being a part of my great team to know the ins and outs of the Dispute Panda software. Um, but there is a free platform. You do not have to pay anything except for when it's time to generate letters. We do have a pro platform. The difference between the two are several things, one of which is you get a safe client access portal. So the safe client access portal allows you to communicate between your customers and not just use the platform as a storage hub. So you have the ability where your clients can onboard, you can set up your uh, merchant service, you can create um, sign up forms, your payment plan, put your contract on there, and your clients have the ability on the dashboard to not just sign the contract, but log into the credit monitoring software that you have suggested. Um, they can upload their IDs, all of those good, wonderful things, okay? Now, it is a 14 a 14 day trial for $1 and then $1.97 thereafter. You can also pay for the year and save on two months. So that is the pro, but I'm going to as we go through, I'm going to be dropping different gems within the software. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about is how you guys can make quiet money because I like soft money and we're going to talk about what that looks like and how you guys will be able to pivot and do that. Okay. But that's the first thing that I want to cover is pricing. So do you get access to everything? So I want to clarify the pro gives you the same thing the free does. The only difference is the level of aggression. So if you upgrade to the pro, you get the letters to the credit bureau, you get the letters to the secondary bureaus, but you also get generated letters specifically to the creditors. And what that does is give you an extra layer of aggression when you are going through your dispute process, because as we know, sometimes when you're doing a uh, credit repair, the the internal system that they use is known as eOscar, and sometimes they're only checking eOscar or they're checking the secondary bureaus. They're not necessarily always contacting the creditors. So with us sending the letters to the creditors, it gives us another layer of of like, hey, you better do your due diligence or we going to find these feeds on you, right? Because we know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So the pro does allow you to have that as long as your client is using Credit Dino. And I will show you how that works because I promise you it's not, it's not hard, guys. You literally click a box and the letter gets generated for you. So I'm going to show you that once we get in. The next most important thing that I like to cover is the training platform. A lot of time people go into the training and they jump right down here. And I love that y'all want to watch the videos, even though my face is not on the videos. Okay. My face ain't on those videos. Don't be looking for my face, but my voice ain't there either, but that's not the point. The point is the videos are great. So if you are late night, like, Hey, what do I pick? Hey, how do I onboard a client? Hey, what does this tab do? It is amazing for you to use the resource. But before you scroll down to see the amazing, magical, mystical videos, I need y'all to start right here at this free download tab. Why do I need you to start that up there? Dispute Panda was created for 
the person who was coming into the credit repair space that wanted to learn with a learning curve. So, excuse me, while they were learning how to dispute, while they were learning the laws, learning what are the, the things that affect the clients and what codes can we use, this system gives you a hands-on how do you attack, what letters do you send, and they give you the attack flow for the full 12 months. The question that I'm always asked is, is this 12 months, is, does this person have to stay with me for 12 months? No, everyone's file looks different. I've had a client that has come with me and stayed with me for four months. I've had a client that's been with me for six months. I've had a client, to be honest, I've had clients with me that have stayed with me for 24 months. The length of time that the client stays with you is contingent on their specific profile. It is contingent on what they are doing as activity. So on average, my contract, and because I'm in the state of Texas, my contract clearly states that you are supposed to be with me for six months. But if we hit the goal before that six month time frame, I promise you, I tell my clients, y'all can go ahead and go be great with God. Okay, let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> but if a client needs more time, we are able to navigate the waters together. And if I was new to the credit space and, and Cyborg, I do use this flow. The only difference is I use a different flow for month six. And that's just because I'm addicted to that letter. The letter works great. So, and I'll tell you guys the letter once we get into the system. But if you are leveraging the software and you're coming in and you're like, I don't know what to do. Literally at the very top of the training, if you click the free guide, the free download, it is going to give you a step-by-step -step as to what you're going to do. It shows you what you're clicking on, how does it look, it gives you all of the details. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed while you are in the, in the I call it while we in the pot cooking, because we, well... Maybe not in the pot cooking. Yeah, you're in the pot cooking. You're not seasoned no more because you seasoned when you bought the, when you got the software, okay? Now you're generating the letters. You're already in the pot, okay? And you're learning how to kind of, what, what, what flavors go with what. So I want you to have that same perspective as you're going in, but not miss the fact that we're gifting you what letters, what variation, when do you use handwritten, when do you use CFPBs, for you to go through because a lot of people that were coming in was asking well when do i do this and when do i do this so we wanted to be able to gift you guys that information in real time so you're able to navigate the waters accordingly does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah okay so if you guys can do me a favor drop in the chat with an emoji or a hand sign or a girl i know about this let me know if you guys knew about this and if you already downloaded the actual attack because I would like to make sure that you guys have this. There was an old attack out and a lot of people have asked me before, well, what about the old attack? The old attack still works. I still use the blue attack. I still use the red attack. However, there were a lot of people that were coming onto the scene and was like, hey, do I have to send letters certified mail? Do I have to send, when do I send the letters to the secondary bureau? So we then created an attack flow that gave you the step-by-step -step of when you need to do what. And then if you need more guidance, we're here to help, okay? So those are the two things that I wanted to cover. The next thing I'm gonna cover is the con the com is the is the contact us tab. Um, sorry, y'all, my stuff be jumping in the way because it's really disrespectful. Give me one second. Okay, so the contact us tab is a tab that allows you to have a clear conversation in dialogue with the back office who is here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you ever have a question, no, we do not have a phone number, but we do have a direct link um, for you to go ahead and send a message to them. So if you're having issues with a client, if you're ha having issues with loading your clients into the system, no matter what it is, you can physically come here you put the client information in, you put your information in, and depending on what the issue is, you can select it and have the system kind of alert the back office of who needs to be your point of contact to maneuver. Now, I'm going to drop something in the chat because you know I love to give y'all gems while y'all here. There is a program called Loom.com. Loom.com allows you to capture images um, when you are having dialogue 
with the back office. So what you can do is let's say you're having a problem loading a client or you're getting an error message. Instead of you just getting the error message and typing out what's going on, you can actually record the loom and it gives you a link that you can put right here. When you put the wow. link there and the people in the back office click that link, you get alerted that your video has been watched. So it kind of gives you a marker as to, okay, well, normally they answer me within 24 hours and normally I get an answer within two hours. So you know that that two hour hit has started because your video has already been watched. So now if for some reason you don't get a response, which that has never happened to me or my crew, but if that does happen, you can go ahead and say, hey, I received a message at this time saying that someone watched my video. It has been 24 hours and I haven't heard back. Would you guys be able to give me an update? So that way, you're. I, I'm all about accountability across the board and I like to make my life easier. I use this to help to tell my VAs what I want things to look like. And it's a five minute sequence, like it, it records up to five minutes. So you can go ahead and record the video, grab the link, drop the link in there. And when they click on it, they get to watch all the business. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why I like it. So if you guys want to leverage it again, it's free. You can have a paid version, which will give you more time, uh, but it is a free platform. And I feel like we pay for so many other things, uh, whatever we can do for free 99. Yeah, I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and go over that. So I'm glad, thank you, Miss Francisca. I'm glad that you said that this was something that you didn't know about when it comes to the training tab. That's yeah. why I always go over it because if you're kind of like, hey, I don't know where I am. And that's why I always say, well, what letter are you on? Because once oh, I know okay. where you are, it gives me the ability to say, well, you're only, you know, you're only one or two months in and, and also ask follow-up questions. Like, are you doing it every 35 days? Are you doing, you know, I'm personally, I'm a 40 day company. So I don't pull my client's report until the 40 day window. Okay. Um, so everyone does things a little bit different. They pivot a little bit differently. And I want to make sure that you guys have the consistency that you need to make sure that you're making massive movement forward, as my girl Liz Simpson says. Okay. Any questions before I go with signing up our dummy free account today? Any other questions, y'all? Hey, Gold, how you doing today? Welcome to the room. Is it Charisma? I think it's Charisma. Welcome, Charisma. Welcome, Dante. Oleg, I think that's how I how you say it. Monisha. If I am Jack Hammering y'all names, please forgive me. I'm Caribbean. <laughs> I'm Caribbean and I grew up in Brooklyn. Okay, so just give me a I pass. can tell you got a uh uh one of those um the dialect, the accent. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so please forgive me, y'all. Okay. <laughs> uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on in. Grab the loom again. It is free. It's in the chat. If you guys uh want to leverage it, no questions. All hearts and minds are clear. All right, all right. Let's go. We're gonna log into the sign up. If you guys have questions and you don't want to come off of mute or you're unable to, go ahead and drop it in the chat. I do read the chat in betwixt, so I'll be able to support. So. When you are signing up for the platform, and I'm hoping that everyone here does have the platform, um, you are going to, if you're going to use the platform as yourself, which I recommend that even if your credit is good, and I like to tell y'all wonderful stories, okay, because I'm really Sophia Petrillo in my head, okay, and if y'all don't know who that is, <laughs> y'all better go watch the Golden Girls, because it is magical, um, but in my head, okay, I have to tell you stories, Sicily, 1973, don't worry about it, um, but <laughs> what happens is I have I have an accountability partner and we are in the business together. And I was tell, telling my accountability partner for like six months, like, girl, did you pull your credit? She was like, why I got to pull my credit? I got good credit. I pay all my bills on time. I was like, well, you're lucky. I'm so happy you pay your bills on time, girl, but you still need to pull your credit. OK, she was like, there's no reason for me to pull my credit because I know my credit score is good. I don't have any collections. I was like, you're talking about the score, but understand your credit is the whole body of the report. So when you're working with someone like myself or you're working with my accountability partner now that I'm a stalked her. She understands that it's not just a number. It's actually aesthetically. What is that report saying about you? right? So it took me six months to wear her down, y'all. But when I wore her down, she went into the system and she actually did pull her credit report. And lo and behold, the credit report had errors on there. Who would have thought? Thunk it, right? 
87% at least have errors on their credit report. The errors she had were out, was wrong addresses, not even just out of date addresses, but flat out wrong addresses. She also had her name spelled incorrectly multiple times. Okay. And then there was a whole account on there that had nothing to do with her. It wasn't impacting her negatively, but it wasn't her account either. But because her name was spelled wrong and there was a social security number on there that wasn't hers, you see how that tidy, tidy up happens. So when you guys are getting into the platform, I always recommend that you go ahead and load yourself in, even if you are a pristine on time payer, because it gives you a different approach for when you're having conversations with your client and they're like, oh, my gosh, I got all this mail. Yep, girl, let me tell you what you do with the mail. Let me tell you where you send it, okay? <laughs> let, let me tell you how TransUnion gives you gives you a lot of papers, okay? Let me tell you how Equifax will send you uh, three or four envelopes and Experian will send you five envelopes. You're now able to talk to them from a really uh, nuanced experience. Like I had a client send me a box the other day and I've been working with uh, CoreLogic, CoreLogic, which is a secondary bureau, I've been doing this on and off for 19 years and I have never seen a 773 page core logic letter ever, Wow. ever. That was my first time, but because I've seen hefty files before, it was an easy conversation to educate her through, but she was like, girl, I got 773 pages. Yeah, because I'm over here working. <laughs> I'm working, <laughs> right? So you're able to have that conversation. But I was going through all that to say, when you guys are loading in and you guys are signing up for the platform, this email is your specific email as the owner. You want to make sure you have another email to add yourself in as the tester um, on the account, okay? So let me go ahead and sign up. All right, so we're going to put my info in here. Now, if you guys are signing up as an individual, but you do not have a business as of yet, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and still sign up. The system is going to go ahead and make the company name your full name. Once you have signed up, it will then go ahead and switch it from, like if you, if you decide to switch it from a personal thing to now you are doing it as a whole entity, I will show you where you can go to go ahead and um, where you can go to actually go ahead and change that name from your name to the company name and where you can add your company logo, okay? Hang on a second. I hope I put the right password in. Y'all don't know me yet, but y'all gonna get to know me. Hey, y'all, hey, I'm a recovering. No, I'm not, I'm not recovering. I like free. I like discounts. I'm nosy, January, February. I need to know what's a new product, what's a new resource. So for me, I will be clicking the email and special offers and product updates and resources because you need to email me and tell me what things are going on, okay? If y'all don't want to, that is completely fine. The only one that is required is the box that says the service agreement for dispute panda privacy. Once you click on that, it's going to load you into the next screen and it's going to take you to the Dispute Panda Service Agreement. In that service agreement, it is telling you how we do business with you and how we expect you to do business with who? Us? And not us because I don't own the company, so don't, don't, not me, but deal. Okay. <laughs> but Dispute Panda, so you can leverage. You want to scroll down, you want to read this. I am not going to read it today, but I always tell everyone to take the time to read what is expected of the company. So if we are not living up to that bargain, you can do what? Hold us accountable accordingly. Okay. As you get into the system, this is going to be the dashboard. This right here is for verification of the email. So that fake email, as you can see that I made, that email is going to um, give me a confirmation. I would have to click on it and then this bar will go away. I'm not going to do that today, but I'll still be able to move forward. So if anyone is working on their computer right now with me, don't be alarmed about this black bar. We still going to get into the business. Okay. So on the dashboard, you're able to see the rounds, you're able to see any missing documents, and you're also able to know if anybody's birthday is coming up. So you can be an amazing person and send them a happy birthday message like, hey, boo, hey, happy birthday from us to you. Thank you for working with us. By the way, if you know anyone else that needs credit repair, you can get a birthday gift of $35 for referring them over to me, right? You can definitely give them some tips. So that is one way to do it. Now, again, earlier I said I was going to talk to you about drip money and how we can make quiet money while we are using the platform. So one of the ways is earning free credits. 
Earning free credits is where you can earn money that goes into the account that you can use for generating a tax and things of that nature. If you are a realtor, a auto dealer, um, a business funding person, this is a great opportunity that you can leverage so that you can go ahead and start getting referrals once the referral goes live. Now, right now it is not active, but if you click this accept button, once it becomes active again, you will get an email with your own affiliate link. And that way, anyone that signs up under your affiliate link, you will be able to make those quiet coins um, for being a part of the affiliate. Of course, it has the link for you to upgrade to the Dispute Panda Pro, but this is another one that I want to talk to us about. The Credit Dino Affiliate Sign Up. So you can make anywhere from $8 to $22 per person that signs up for your credit monitoring link via your affiliate link, right? So you would actually fill this out. You will then get an affiliate link that will say um, that you can put in your link tree. You can put in your bit.ly. You can put um, on your bio tab of your Facebook or your Instagram, right? Depending on what you're leveraging. But one of the things that I do is on the first, ooh, I just realized I didn't do it today. I'm gonna do it today before I get off the phone. Um, whether you, you can post it on your social medias on the first, the 15th and the 30th, I post, hey, have y'all pulled y'all credit? Have you pulled your credit? I went live earlier today and I went live because I don't know if you guys are aware, but Tesla just laid off 20% of their workforce. So as a credit repair person, my conversation is, do y'all have a plan of attack? We have a fire attack, right? Because we go to work and they do what? Fire drills. They do fire drills. Do you have a money drill? Do you have a money drill that if something happens, you're prepared? No, you may not be thinking about this now, but what opportunities you have. So this is kind of like free content that you can give out to people. So on my live today, I went ahead and said, hey, guys, if you guys are impacted from the loss, whether it's Tesla or not, I have a free action plan. So again, I'm now collecting what? I'm collecting their email and their phone number. I have, hey, I have um, a free action plan that y'all can sign up. Comment me below. I'll go ahead and send it to you. And that action plan will help you with, knowing who to call, knowing what to do, and knowing your options. I also gave them three uh, tips that they can implement in real time in order for them to go ahead and recover, right? So one of the tips that I gave today was if you're impacted because you lost your job, one, one of the things you want to do when you get home is see what things do you need to cut because not everyone has six months of savings in their bank account. There's a lot more people living pay to, paycheck to paycheck than there is people that have reserves. So if you are one of the people that may not have reserves, let's focus on your budget. What do you have? What do you need? What can you let go? Number two, call your credit card companies. A lot of these credit card companies, especially the second chance companies, y'all, Credit One, uh, First First Progress, Milestone, Indigo, they have this insurance protection that they'll ask the client what if they want every single time they log on. It costs them like between eight and $10 every pay cycle, I think. So they're able, well, every statement cycle. So they could potentially have that coverage and that if they call that number, they would be able to go ahead and get that coverage to help them while they're in the interim of trying to find a job so that they're not getting their credit score impacted, right? And the third advice that I gave them was, hey guys, on top of that, do you realize that you can change your due dates on a lot of your accounts? You can change it on your auto insurance. Heck, you can even change it on your credit card company, right? And, 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 and things like that. So you can leverage that. And then while you're having that conversation, for the people who may not have lost their job, but are ready to make a credit impact, click on my link, for you to go ahead and find out what your scores are. And if you want to book a call with me, here's my website. So now you're giving them all this sauce. They find you a value and you ain't really do nothing but drop some tips that you would have told your best friend anyway, if y'all were sitting at the table and she was telling you about that boyfriend that she didn't need to have. You follow what I'm saying? It's all about strategy. You want to make sure you're being strategic through <laughs> the process. <laughs> So, so with that being said, this is something that you can leverage to get quiet money just by having your affiliate link out there for it to be used, okay? Now, after covering that, if you want to search for a client, you can click up here. It does require three characters to pull, any, pull in any client's information, or you can click on the client tab. You can see your active clients, your inactive clients. You can import 
if you need and if you guys are having problems with the import, please, please, please contact our customer service. You can send them the CSV file and they will go ahead and import the client for you if there is an issue. And if you need to load your client in, you would click on the new client button and it will allow you to go ahead and move forward. All right. So for those of you guys that are new on the platform, I always say get the affiliate link. You can go ahead and text in your phone. If you're in a group, in a Facebook group, be like, hey, guys, I just found a new method of credit repair. Um, if you guys sign up for my credit monitoring, I'll give you three months free. Right. So this is a way that you can get the silent money for them to sign up for the credit monitoring. And even if you turn around and they do not sign up with you, a lot of people don't cancel the credit monitoring. So you would continue to make that money until they cancel the service. Right. So that is a that is just something to kind of think out of the box. The letter option gives you the ability to see all the letters that are sent out for your client. What I want to point out is that for the letters to go out the same day, they have to be completed by 12 p.m. PST, which is West Coast side, West side. Uh, I'm I'm Central, used to be Eastern. <laughs> but when you're doing that, if you don't get the letters printed by 12 p.m. PST, please know it's going to go out the next business day. The letters that are first class mail are the same exact letters as if you were to take the envelopes and walk them to the post office like I did today. Yeah, that's all you're doing. If you want to be able to track the letters, you have to do certified mail and there is an upcharge for that. So the system can mail the letters out for you. I get asked every single class, do you prefer mailing it yourself or sending it to the system? So for transparency, if I am traveling, if I'm dipping and doing in these streets, I will allow the system to mail the letters for, for me. But if I am home, myself, my daughter, and my husband, we all stuff the envelopes, mail the letters out because I do understand the importance of a geotag. So it does depend on where I am and what's going on in my life as to what I'm going to do. But I personally like to mail out the letters because I know exactly when it's going to the post office. I know exactly when things are getting picked up. So it does... It, I listen, I have control issues. Okay, I'm the oldest child. So just, just work with me. <laughs> if y'all are not the oldest child, don't even worry about it, child. Use the system. You'll be fine. But but either way, the system is great. I use it when I travel a lot, especially if I'm going out of town. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for me because as when I show you guys how quickly it is that you can create the letters and send it out, you'll understand why. If you're traveling, this is the best thing to do. You click, you go, you go on about your business. I don't drink, but I act like I do when I go on vacation. Okay, I have the best mocktails, y'all. Y'all need to come hang out with me. Best mocktails, okay? So the next option is the inbox. The inbox is where if you have the pro feature, you are able to have conversations with your um, clients privately through the safe client portal the reports tab is my favorite and i don't know how many people follow me on social media but hunty i love me the reports tab okay i'm going to show you what the reports tab looks like so this is what the reports tab looks like oh wow. on the reports tab you're able to track what have been the credit score increases or decreases what has been the total de deletion since you've been in operation? You know, you can change it for the month, you can change it for the year, and you can see what the total deleted amount of debts are. Not only can you do that, but you can go ahead and make it into a social media post. So with the pro, this comes not just on the company level, but on the client level. So I have a client who, let me see if I can pull them up. Hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna show you this client. So this client right here, this is a recent poll that I just did, right? So I'm able to say, well, three items were deleted. There are 13 updated to negative. There's 25, but I'm able to have a robust conversation and I can use this on my platform. I'm also the type of person that I will also use this, guys, if, my, if it has a negative. So if it shows that the scores has dropped, not only do I tell the information there, I literally go to the credit report and I show on, like, I don't show the client's name, of course, but I go to the credit report and I show, hey, last month, this was his utilization. Look at his utilization this month or her utilization. Last month, they had this much on-time payment, but now this is the information for the on-time payment. I take them through so that they can have a robust understanding of why the scores shift and change, right? And I'm going to go into that 
in a little bit more details a little bit later. But this is also on the corporate level, but in each client's file when you're on the pro, you're able to see it on that level as well. The subscription tab is where you can um, integrate your payment system and you can also make your payment plans, your payment forms, your onboarding forms, so that instead of you typing all the information in, you can have an onboarding form for your client. Once they sign up, then you're automatically able then you're automatically able to um, get it into your platform and it kind of works for you, right? So you, you can integrate Zapier that if you have an email sequence or a text message sequence that it can start integrating with whatever other platform you have to make that happen. Of course, we have the training tab and the contact us tab that we already viewed. Now, this is where I want us to go. There's two ways to get to settings. You can click on the balance tab or you can click on these three buttons and you can click on set on settings. But I like to go here. Boom. I'm going to start from the top because that's what I do. So on the top is the profile. The profile is your information on when you signed in. So if you need to change the email address, change your phone number, you want to add a picture, this picture is only visible if you have the pro. So if you do not have the pro, you do not need to change it. But if you want to, you can, okay? But once you have the pro, the client will be able to see your face once they get into the system. The organization tab is where you can go to go ahead and add the logos. You can add your website information, your privacy, your business address, and your service agreement. If anyone in here is in need of a contract, please, please, please let me know so I can drop one in the chat for you guys to have. But I, we do have a simple contract, so it's not an extensive one. It's a simple contract. Team members. For all of the team members, instead of you giving... Hold on one second. This off the page. Here we go. Instead of you giving your information to... Oh, Charisma says she needs it. Okay, hold on, my love. Let me drop it like it's hot over here. Okay, so if you guys need to add a team member you're able to go into the system and actually add a team member. And that way you don't have to give your username and your password at all for that team member to gain access, okay? So now you can secure your stuff, especially if you're a person that use like the same email, the same password for everything, you don't wanna give that out. Also, the affiliate link is where you can go ahead and if you have the pro, you can put all the affiliate links for all the credit monitoring softwares that works with your profile. If it doesn't, you just simply turn it off and you can keep on, if y'all like me, I only keep on credit dino because I don't want to tussle. I don't want to tussle with people. Okay, I said what I said because it gives me a free round of credit. So if we want to be technical, I don't have to pay $17 and I'm up eight bucks every single month. What are we talking about here? I'm operating in the black. I like to operate in the black. We don't operate in the red over here. We ain't got time for it, okay? We ain't got time for it. So that is where you can go to uh, either set your preferences if you want all of these. So you can get affiliate links for all of these people. But please understand that if you're on the pro, you only get the creditor letters if they're with Credit Dino, if they're with any other credit monitoring software, you do not have the creditor letters. And when they're with Credit Dino, you get a free round of attack. So off the bat, if you're charging $99, you don't have to spend 17 of that on the rounds of attack and then your paper, your envelopes, your stamps, your ink, right? Disputing options. This is where you can change the address. The credit bureaus have like eight to 15 different addresses. If you see that you're getting more response from one versus the other, you can come in here and edit it yourself. Um, you don't necessarily have to, this is normally up to date, but if for some reason that were to happen, they wanted to give you the ability to come in and change. If the addresses change, you will get the mail back. So you would know that there was an address change that happened in real time. The billing information is where you can go and do multiple things. So number one, you can, not, you can set up not only your credit card information, but your bank card information, okay? Also, hold on a second. This is also where you can go and upgrade to the pro. If you want to do a bulk purchase of uh, funds, you can do this here. But let's say you're only doing credit repair for yourself or maybe your husband, you can do the subscribe and save option. So if you're using credit dyno, let's say, you would be able to get the round of attack free, but you still have to pay for stamps. So you can sign up for the $60 a month for you and your husband. You would get $90 and this way the system can mail the letters out for you. 
Um, if you're just doing it for yourself, if you do $20, you get $30 every 30 days they bill your card. And if you need to get more credits, you would just buy it in bulk here. Please bear in mind the bulk only gives you what you buy. So if you buy $50, that's all you're going to get, play $50. That's it. No more, no less. Okay. The invoice tab is where you can see the invoices for your clients as well as the Panda Pro. You can see any statements. Any The activity tab is where you can see the attacks, any mailing, and any attack credits per client. So if you have a system glitch, like you're like, wait a minute, I got double billed, you can see what was charged and what was billed so you can make sure that you're being billed accurately. The integration tab is also a pro feature. So once you get the in, once you get the pro, you're able to use Zapier. So if a client onboards here, you're able to go ahead and put them in like another software that automatically connects because of Zapier. So once they get put in here, they get put in your text message thread or your email sequence, however you, you'd like to go about it. And then if you click the referral link, that takes us back to what I showed you in the beginning, where you can get your own referral link to refer Dispute Panda out and you can earn soft money, as I stated. So on anything that I covered, does anyone have any questions, concerns, or comments on what we've covered so far before I load my dummy client into the system? Any questions? Jay said no. Welcome, Jay. Hey, boo, hey. Welcome to the club. I'm so happy you're here. Okay. So first thing before we even start loading our clients, I want to talk about what is needed. Cool. So here's what's needed, y'all. When we're dealing with our clients, a lot of times they do not know what is necessary to prove that they are who they say they are. I remember one time I had a person argue me down because... Their license was canceled, like it had expired, right, y'all? And I was like, I can't use your license because it's expired. And he was like, but it's me. You're right. It's you. It's out of date, though. So what else you got, right? <laughs> the same would apply if their address is different. If they were in Kentucky and now they live in Michigan, then, again, the same thing will apply. We're not going to use that ID. We're going to pick something else on this list that will be able to benefit the client. Now, as you can see, I, um, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I accidentally uh, deleted what was sent to me by the team. So I went into the training tab and I screenshot this from the video. So if you're ever questioning, hey, how does it work? I am going to drop this in the chat, but it's also available in the training video as well. And you want to make sure that you're collecting up-to-date, accurate information from your clients. So if they don't have a valid ID, but a driver's license, like the driver's license doesn't have the correct address, y'all, if they got a passport, use a passport. The passport doesn't even show an address at all. OK, so you can leverage and use that. Um, what I do want to tell you is best practice when we're talking about utility bills, gas bill, water bills, any residential bills. The best practice is to ask for an updated bill every 60 to 90 days. That is best practice, because that way we all know that the credit bureau likes to stall. We don't want to give them a reason because they'll use it. OK, so just leverage that if you're using that um, a residential bill, you want to go ahead and make sure that you're getting an updated one from the client every um, 60 to 90 days. Um, let me close this out. Why is why it look like it's about to rain outside, y'all? Devastated. OK, so now we are going to load my fake client into the system. Now, as you're looking at this, you'll see that there's certain red stars that are available. These red stars are the only things that are required. Hold on, can you dispute personal information here or do you have to go directly to the credit bureau? So this system is going directly to the credit bureau, my love. So you are gonna be disputing personal information. That is a great question. You are gonna be disputing personal information to the credit bureaus. And if you click on the static letters, which is showing here, with the secondary bureaus and make it a little bigger because you know I got vintage eyes, y'all. Won't we do it? Um, the secondary bureaus, Lexus, Nexus, Inovis, Clarity, Credco, Data X, right? These are all secondary bureaus. Um, you can leverage it. I'm going to tell you that I'm very methodical. So I'm not here for speed, I'm here for efficiency. If my client wants speed, they I'm gonna need you to stop uh making these mistakes and learning how to be a beast in these credit streets. So it didn't take you five years. It didn't take you five days for you to get in the place that you're in. It took you a series of 
mismanagement, right? So for me, I do write the letters. There are some people that will call. There are some people that recommend calling. Personally, I generate the letters month after month. Um, I, I am very um, aggressive, I would say. So I send out a personal information letter separately every 15 days. So it goes out with the letter that goes out with the client. And then I send it on day 15, day 30, like that's how it goes out for my workflow. Um, just because I know that sometimes getting off the names and the address takes a lot longer um, to go through because you're fighting it with the secondary bureaus. And that is a tactic that the credit bureaus are aware that if you remove the addresses, that all of a sudden it will help leverage removing the negative account as well. So great question. But yes, disputing personal information is on every letter that is generated with the uh, attacks that you select. So great question there. What's going to be my email today? Rock steady com. There we go. So you're going to want to make sure that when you're filling this information out, guys, you're filling it out with the information on each line. What I mean by that is you don't want to put the city and state on this line. You want it to put, on, put it on the line where it's supposed to go. OK, when you click on the Mockingbird lane, if the person has a unit, a suite or whatever, you would put it here. But you're still going to make sure that the city um, is selected appropriately. All right. You want to make sure that the client's date of birth is in there. And if you have the pro, you would go ahead and click on invite client here. It will automatically send them um uh, invitation for them to log in and upload their documents, do all of those things. I am a big culprit of doing that all together. Like I create videos. I have a welcome video when my client comes on, even when it comes to like my mentorship program and my training courses, they have a welcome video like, hey, y'all, hey, welcome to my crazy land. Um, so you kind of know who you're dealing with and what you're getting into outside of just a consultation call. Question in the chat. So to be clear, you are saying that you continue to send out the letters and keep attacking personal information 15 days and 30 days, et cetera. Correct. So the first month that the client is with me, day one, the personal information letter goes out. I don't start disputing until day three. The reason that I don't start disputing anything on their file until day three is because I live in the state of Texas and we have a three-day right to, res to resend. So if the client in the first three days says that they want their money back, I have to give it back to them. So I ain't going to do no work till day four. Because you got three days for me to give back your money. Okay. Now, I don't have a problem sending out the personal information letter because I use that as my announcement to the credit bureau. And normally what happens is once that letter goes out, even if the client cancels from me, if or if they say, hey, I don't think I could pay or whatever the case may be, cool, no problem. They've at least gotten their profile and they're able to see the long list of things that they've been holding on to and not really working. So if their dream house and dream car wasn't enough, that uh 773 page document might just be it might just do the job for me, right? So just, just a thought. That is how I personally do it with the flow. Um, great question, great question. Yes, static letters are available. And we're going to go over some of the static letters so you can see what's in there. Um, so once we get to the screen, we're going to go in the order of how it shows here. So once you're in the system here, the first thing you see is the proof of identification and the uh, proof of address. These two are required. This here is optional. The optional item is your social security card. I'm going to say this. If you're using the social security card as the proof of identification, so your client does not have an active driver's license or it's expired or it doesn't have the right address on it, cool. You can use a social security card as their primary identifier and then the proof of address would be the supporting document that you give. Now, let me tell you what I love. I don't like to waste anything. So the goal here is to get all of the identification between one to two documents max. So you crop out what you don't need. Look, I'm gonna show y'all. Let me see, come with me, let me show you. So you crop out everything. They don't need to know what the past due balance is. They don't need to know if they have a carryover. It's none of it in business, right? So you're gonna crop all of that out and hit save. The system is only going to generate that portion of the document that is uploaded. Okay, 
you're going to take the same thing and do the drag and drop of the ID. A lot of times they'll do the ID from like up here and not zone in. You can crop it so that you can make sure that you're maximizing your dollars without spending it all right in the business. Because the reason why we got this business was why? Because we wanted to operate in the black, not in the red. All right. Again, you don't have to put the social security card in here, but since I have all three, I was loading all three. So you guys have the ability to see it. If you're using the other credit monitoring software, such as Identity IQ or MySquare IQ, you would do the file download. If you're using Smart Credit, you would copy the HDMI code. Well, let me tell y'all what, y'all ain't gotta do none of that with Credit Dino. So the Credit Dino, you physically just come here. You click on Credit Dino, and one of the things that I also love is that with Credit Dino, I don't have to log into the credit monitoring software every 35 days. I only have to log into here, do the one-click import every 35 days, and it automatically gives me my free credits. I'm going to show you what I mean. Give me one second, y'all. So I use Identity IQ, so mm -hmm. if I switch to Credit Dino, that mm -hmm. would probably be better. It would, but remember, if you're using Identity IQ, you want to update your file. You have to update on Identity IQ and then download the file here. Like, save it oh, yep. and then download it here. Okay. Um, who am I going to... Hold on a second. I'm trying to find somebody I could steal from one of my platforms over here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go now. Let's see if we can see their information. I'm still in six days old. Okay, so we're good. We're in a good spot here. I'm going to tell y'all how this um wonderful dot, dot, dot line really helped me because I used to accidentally show the passwords all the time. And you don't want everybody in your business and your clients' business and stuff. You know, you don't want to do that. So you click the one, click import, give it a second. It's going to load for you. And then it's going to do this pop-up that says, hey, thank you for using Credit Dino. You have just earned one free attack. So now when I go to, to tell the system to attack what I needed to attack, guess what? I'm not paying for that attack. And when I come back in, thir in 35 days, or if y'all are like me and you do it every 40 days, when you come back, you're able to click that one-click import, it automatically get updates the file in Credit Dino, and then you're automatically ready to go. So you don't have to log into two separate spaces to get what you need. You click on the disputing tab because you cannot dispute or attack until you tell the system what you are attacking. So you have to select the profile. Now, if you guys look on the screen, it only selects the public records and the accounts that are impacted. It will never select the inquiries at this present time. The data isn't there for it to kind of talk to each other, for it to know which one of these are connected to an open account down here. So for that, that's what we need human interaction for, okay? So with that being said, while you're in the software, one of the things that you wanna make sure is that if you're going to click on any of these inquiries, you wanna make sure it's not attached to an open and active credit card. You do not want it to be attached to an open and active credit card. There are two ways for you to search. You can do control F or you can do command F. Ooh, it's gonna do all types of things, y'all. Here we go. With Command F, you can go ahead and click on like Allied. So how it says Allied, it will show you how many times Allied is showing up. You're able to go ahead and click Enter and it will take you to the spaces. As long as Allied is not an open and active credit card down here, it is safe for you to go ahead and dispute it, okay? The public information is always going to have any bankruptcies, any um, liens or judgments that's there for your clients. That's where you're going to see it here. And you're able to dispute with the bankruptcy court as well as you're able to dispute it with um, the creditors directly. So that's a double dip that I like to do um, when we're going through the profile itself. Okay. Now, let's dive into the part that I personally love. So when you have Credit Dino, you get this wonderful eye icon. I'm gonna show y'all what this eye icon does. So let's say this account was open. Right here, you can clearly see it's closed. It tells you what the highest balance is. 
Um, it tells you your payment history. It gives you all these wonderful meat and potatoes, right? Here's how this is helpful. So when I go through my consultation, one of the things that I do for my clients is I talk to them about the five components that makes up the credit score. The five components are your, in your inquiries, of course, the credit mix, of course, the age, the utilization, and the payment history. And everybody likes to talk about it in percentage. I like to talk about it in plain math. Why? Because we ain't got time for the percentage, okay? I did not like algebra class, okay? I like regular math. One plus one equal what? Two, unless you with me, according to Jamie Foxx, okay? Because Jamie said one plus one ain't two when you with me, okay? So he was letting you know he was fast, okay? But anyway, I digress. So with that being said, when you're going through the system and I'm having a conversation, if this was a client that I was speaking to, one of the things that I would say to her is, hey, my love, so let's have a conversation about your actual profile, Let's talk about the fact that you're only paying 33% of your credit card on um, on time. Well, that 33%, realistically, on your FICO score, it's worth 35% of your overall score. Of that, that equates to 192.5 points. 192.5 points. So now... If you are not paying 100% of the time on time, you are leaving uh, up to 192.5 points on the table. So now when we're having this dialogue, we're going to be like, hey, my love, if it's if you're having 33% of 100, like how much you get it? And if this is impacting and this is your trend for all of your files, you're leaving points on the table. So you want to get to the 700 club, but we're not doing the activities to that 700 club. OK, now I can take it a step further and click on account health. Account health is going to tell me how much is this person utilizing? Now, again, this is dummy count. So please forgive the fact that the percentage isn't here. But we can clearly see that they use it more than 100%, okay? Because the number was 700 and they total balance is 1,037. So they well over that 100% threshold. So the conversation is going to be a little different if we're talking to someone who has an open account versus someone who has a closed account. But let's be clear, 30% is your utilization that equates to 165 points. If you are using more than 100%, which means it's more than what they gave you, you are now in the red. What we don't do over here, we don't operate in the red. So how do we fix that? So if this account was open, the conversation that we will tell the client is, hey, I need you to pay the minimum payment times two plus $4. Why you ask? I have the answer. The reason is when the client pays the minimum payment times two, when that bill cycles again and that interest rate is hit, it will not take them over the threshold of their credit card limit. So you're giving them the ability to what they say back in the day, you're robbing pizza to pay Paul, you're giving them that ability to do that, right? But I take it a step further and say, hey, love, we're also going to change the way you talk about your payments. The due dates are the latest possible day you can make the payment before a fee is assessed by that creditor. That's how I want us to start looking at the due date. The statement date is when they're going to go and run and tattletale on us. Let's talk about it. We don't like tattletales at all, period. So if we know that they're going to tell on us, how do we leverage this? So a lot of people are like, well, what am I supposed to do? I have to pay this bill. I have to pay that bill. Cool. If your statement closes on the 7th of the month, but you don't have to pay that bill until the 10th of the month, I want you to take that money and on the 5th of the month, I want you to pay your credit card. I want you to pay whatever amount of capital that you're going to need to pay that light bill. You're going to need to pay that phone bill. And I want you to pay it on that credit card, pay it as close to zero as possible. Because let's be clear, they calculate your utilization of your overall credit, every single credit that you have available, right? They look at all your credit cards and they say, okay, so your total credit cards is $10,000. Of the $10,000, you're using $8,000, right? So with that being said, I need to make sure that I'm playing the numbers game. So I'm going to take this capital, I'm going to drop it on this card, and then I'm going to take that card after my statement date has closed, and I'm going to go use that card to make my payment. 
I'm going to use that card to pay my cell phone bill. I'm going to get it if I if I'm already going to make a payment arrangement with uh Verizon. Okay, because they 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 did me better than um Cricket did me, but don't don't worry about that. Um, did y'all get affected with the phone? Because let's tell you how Cricket. Cricket told me I couldn't talk to nobody, y'all. And I already talked to the 50 people in my head, okay? Yes, but for one whole day, I was sitting there, and it was on airplane mode. And I'm like, but I ain't put it on airplane mode. I didn't put it on airplane mode. Yeah, I didn't I didn't put it on airplane mode. Cricket did. They said I couldn't talk to them, okay? Uh, Verizon didn't do that to the people, so I just wanted to let y'all know but if y'all gonna make payment arrangements anyway make the payment arrangement give that give yourself that time but make sure that you're leveraging your credit accordingly because i'm going to tell you i use my credit card i i, I swipe i do i swipe every day i swipe today at the uh, post office two times okay but i also make sure that i pay before my statement date closes so it appears to the creditors that i'm a responsible user that is what your credit your credit report is doing. Your credit report is saying this person is safe, this person isn't, right? So we just want to navigate the waters properly. So that's kind of what some of my consultation looks like, that I'm educating them on the numbers so they can understand what numbers are they're missing so that when they're having the dialogue with me and they're talking about a letter, I'm going to always talk to them about behaviors, because I can write all the letters in the world, but if you keep on being late, what, what my letter is going to do? I can write all the letters in the world, but if you keep on maxing out your credit cards, what are my letters going to do? Because my letters can remove, or if my letters are only here to remove outdated and errored items that are on your credit report. If the things are not errored and they're not outdated, they're not erroneous, they're not a lie, then we now need to figure out another plan of action to get you where you need to be, right? Does that make sense, y'all? Drop an emoji in the chat if it makes sense. I love how Miss Guest is interacting. I appreciate you. Come back all the time. Come back all the time. No problem. <laughs> all right. So now let's say you guys are a little bit more seasoned and you have a letter that you love to use and you like, listen, my 1099 letter is from the gods, okay? And it works on every single charge off over $600. You can go ahead and put that chart, that letter here. You can go ahead and hit use template. And what will happen is the system will generate that particular letter that you want in that particular file so that that verbiage is here. Hack that I have learned is that if you are using the Supreme Boosted, it will use your letter in conjunction with the letter that's being used in the system. But if you're using any other letter, it will only print out the information that you have entered in this message box. So if you guys have a letter for late payment, if you guys have a letter for bankruptcy, whatever it is, you get to navigate those waters here and you can click on it. Can I remove late payments for student loans? Absolutely, you can remove late payments or you can get it updated. A lot of people don't, don't know that option, but yes, you can also get it updated because most of the time with the letters, we're challenging when it's reported. Um, but yes, this system does help you with that as well. Uh, can I just elaborate on that? I'm sorry, I'm driving right now. Um, yeah, come on, boo, pull up to the club. What's your, what's your question? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, with the with the late payment, um, I've been noticing, I, I noticing in my personal, um, that they only reported 90 days. They didn't report 30 or 60. Would that they be never do? Period? They okay. never do. Student loans give you actually 60 days before they actually report you late. So if they report you on day 90, it's because they gave you 30, 60 before they decided to report you. So it's not an error. That's just how the uh, how the codes for the federal student loans was, was worked out. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So if it says 90 days, they play. They didn't, they didn't pay. They didn't pay. Tell them no. Go on, sit down. But you can get it updated. You not you not necessarily move, but they can update it. And a lot of times you can request it when you're doing the deferment. I have been successful to be able to do that. Great gotcha. question. Thank Any you. other questions before we dive to before we move it? Okay. He said no. He said he ain't talking to me anymore because he's driving. And I want you to drive safely. So go ahead and put on your seatbelt now. So I have like about 26 uh collections that have been closed. Mm -hmm. But I would like to get them off mm -hmm. of the credit report. report. Mm -hmm. Is there like a way that I could send letters to remove it or do I have to wait or? 
So this system gives you the letters and they will generate the letters specifically based on the information that's on your credit report. So okay. although we all have the same flow when you click on, why does they, please hold, my system is taking a break. Here we go. So even though we all have the same flow, the letters are going to be specific to what's on your credit profile. So if you have charge off or you have collections, the system is going to automatically pick the collections and the charge-offs. It's going to pick anything that has a late payment within that 24-month window that is impacting you, right? If it's yeah. outside of that 24-month window, you may get like a yellow icon. And that yellow icon is for you to say, hey, I want you to make sure that you want us to dispute this because if for some reason it gets removed, it could potentially harm you if that late is outside of that 24 month window, because okay. you're earning back your points within that. But these letters do help you with collections and charge off. Great question. Great question. All right. So now we hit save filter. And I'm sorry, repeat that for me. Was that, was that uh, I was yeah, I was elaborating on that. I saw that notice come up too. It's in, you're talking about when it's highlighted in yellow, correct? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I have it here. And that's there it is. You just passed it. I passed it because you yeah, know I, I told y'all I got bitches eyes now. Hold on. Go back up. Go back up. Is that the one? Is that the yellow one? Oh, uh -uh, no? this is red. Oh, okay, my bad. No, you fine because you know I listen. I got vintage eyes now. A good bear. <laughs> vintage. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I'm a good season eyeball looker. Okay, so sometimes it'll be like a little yellow icon that you'll see here. Mm -hmm. um, that lets you know, hey, investigate this some more. I was wondering if she had it, but she doesn't have a yellow icon. So this box is red. It will actually be a yellow, like a yellow highlight. And then it has like a little caution uh, box, a uh, caution sign on there. And mm -hmm. it allows you to make the decision if you want the letter to be generated or not for that particular one, because it's letting you know that, hey, yes, there's something that's impacting this file, but it is outside of that two-year window, which means more than likely the account has been brought up to date. And, uh, but the system now has a specific letter for late payments. So before it did it, when the system was first created, it only had aggressive letters to remove, delete, get done. But now we have a letter specifically for late payments that the system will read, but that that alert is still on there because that's how the system was coded when it was made. So great question, great question. All right, let me just... All right cool. So it's time for us to start our first round and we know that we're going to be doing the Punch of Fury Supreme Boosted for y'all that have the pro, you can click the little creditor box. I'll show y'all. And then we're going to do the static letters to the secondary bureau. And we're also going to do handwritten. Okay. Um, this is what we're going to do day one. It does not have to be in color. It should be single-sided and it's first class mail. Okay. So you're going to click the button here. You're going to come here to start round. Once you click start round, you're going to go to punch of fury. You're going to click the handwritten box. If you guys have the pro, you're simply clicking this box for it to generate the creditor letters. If you are using Credit Dino, then you're going to come down here and click on Supreme Boosted. You're going to hit start round and you're going to type in confirm. It's going to tell me, okay, cool. It did it. And this is my attack. Then I'm going to go back to start round. I'm going to click on static letters. I'm going to do handwritten again. I personally, best practice, it does start here, but the system jumps, y'all. And I don't like jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. So I scroll down and I click on from the bottom and work my way up because it will segment it off where you're only going to click the boxes for the secondary bureau, everything else disappears. This only works if you have at least $1 in your bank. If you do not have a dollar in the bank, it will not generate the static letters for free. The static letters are free, but you have to have at least $1 in your bank. Um, once it's done, it will have another, I'm gonna show you guys on the printout. Once it is done, it will have, hmm. Let me make this a little smaller. You will be able, hold on, let me show y'all. You see right here where it says static and it says creditors, it will, and it says attack, it'll give you an individual box for each one of them. And then once that's done, you can simply tell the system that they can mail it out. 
this is how much it's going to cost to mail those letters. Um, now, this is double-sided. So we'd have to switch it to no, we want it to be single-sided. And now we know how much it is. So mm -hmm. if you want the system to mail it out, you would just simply cancel here, load the monies in here to mail the letter out, come back to the client, select mail out, and then you want to make sure you hit no, and it can go out. If you are a person that is like, um, let's say this was round, this was round one, but you got a, or this is round one, you've already sent it off, and now you're at round two. Or let's say, um, you just want to reprint the letters. You can deselect whatever letters you don't want the system to print. So that way you don't have to worry about those letters being sent out. I send out all the letters. The question that I had last time was, does it send the letters individually? It does. Each one of these letters, would, so they have four letters going to TransUnion, it's individual letters. It's not going out in like one bulk envelope. Um, What else is I going to say? If you want to download it and print it yourself, you just simply click download all, and then you'll be able to print out the letters yourself. Um, And when you go into the letter sequence, you'll be able to see that the letters have been sent and you can, it'll tell you the estimated delivery date. If you had the system mail it, it will tell you the estimated delivery date. If you downloaded it yourself, it ain't gonna tell you nothing because we don't know when you got to the post office, okay? We don't know when you decided to go speak to Rhonda and them down at the post office, <laughs> giving the stuff, okay? My post office lady, her name is Rhonda. She's very lovely. Um, <laughs> if you have a tracking code, the tracking code is here. The system will give you a an ID code. And if you select a double-sided, this will also be highlighted. If it's in color, it will show color. So this is how you're able to kind of see all the information. Once you get to the client, let me go back into the client. So this is their scores. This is their information. You can go to the history. You can see what's been downloaded. So let's be clear, guys. If you don't download and you don't mail, the system is still going to code it that you downloaded the letter. So I want you to be able, because as you can see, I didn't download anything. I didn't click a button. I didn't do anything. But the system is registering that you've selected that letter and it's reading that you didn't tell it to send it out. So the assumption is you downloaded it and you're sending it yourself. So you want to make sure that you're aware of that. It gives you the credit report. It gives you the credit score. So you can see what the scores are. You can click on invoice to see any invoices. And the note is where you can leave a uh, certain note. So like, for instance, I have one client that does not have, uh, let me show you. She does not have a data X account. She does not have an, an a micro build account. So what I would do in the notes is I would put receive documentation back stating no file for data X, no file for micro bill. So now I won't generate those letters when I go on to round two, because in round two, I'm supposed to send letters to the secondary bureaus, but I don't need to send to that bureau. So I don't need to waste paper. I don't need to waste a checkbox. I would just simply come here. And when it's time for round two, I would click the static letters and I would not click the data X. I would just click all the other ones that apply for that particular client when I'm doing round two. So it gives you a lot of control so that you don't waste time generating or printing something that doesn't need to go out. Okay. So how would you know data X and micro bill is not on their, um, they would they don't have that. How would you know? So it depends on how you dispute. So personally, I request the report that's a part of my day one activity. Okay. So my day one activity, I send out the personal information letter, which I call my introduction. I send out my um, my request report to all of the secondary bureaus. So if my client has bankruptcies, I'm call I'm going to all the secondary bureaus that hold bankruptcies, and I'm asking for the report. So okay. before I even before I even again start the rounds of disputing for my clients, because I do have to give them that right to cancel, I am literally asking for the document. So by the time we get to round two. I should have already gotten the documentations back from my client that says, hey, this is their report or mm -hmm. we don't have a report here for this client, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to take a screenshot of that because I do have a client that sent me one. So I have an example. It literally came back saying we searched our profile and this person doesn't have a profile. And that can happen for some of the smaller secondary bureaus. 
as I said, Lexus Nexus is Big Brother in the Sky. They have your driving record. They have your arrest record. They know that you are married to Sam and Sam's third cousin twice removed on his mama's side. They got your business. Okay. <laughs> Lexus Nexus got your business. Oh. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Hey, Mr. S, what questions you got, my love? Yeah, so um, I was looking at the goodwill letter for the static, um, and I was on the pro. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, will the system automatically pick if your client like has fourteen miss uh, late payments? Will the if I click the goodwill letter, will it automatically do all fourteen on the different um, trade lines, or will I have to go down and put each individual one? Yeah, that Dropbox right there. Will I have to put each individual creditor with the pro as well? So no matter whether you're using the pro or you're using the, reg the regular, you mm -hmm. would have to come here. If you're doing a goodwill letter, you would have to come to the dispute tab first and you would have to select the person that you're trying to get the goodwill from. So that means that you're only so in let's say we were doing it in real time. I would come here and I would deselect all. I would deselect all and I would only be selecting the one that we are disputing that has the late payment. So let me see if I could find one of hers that has a late payment. Lord, that's a long file. Hold on. Your finance. Looks like one of my clients. <laughs> all right. So let's just assume this one had a late payment, right? So I would click the late payment option. I mean, I'll click this this account because this one had the late payment, right? And I would scroll up and hit save. Once I hit save, I will then go to start round. I will hit static letters. And then I would go to the Goodwill letter. Where did I pass it? The Goodwill letter. I would click on here. The only information that this is asking me for is who's receiving the document, what address is going to, what city, state, and zip. That is all it's asking me for in this box. It's not asking okay. you to tell how many lates we're arguing, what are we arguing for. The system generates that letter on its own. The only thing this box is asking you for is who am I sending it to? And you can only do it per account. So if this person, you're trying to do a Google letter for five accounts, you would have to fill this one out, click the box, hit save, go back to disputing, hit the other um, account and do it individually. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yes. As awesome. best practices. Now, you can try linking all of them together, but here's what the problem is. You can only fill out one who's receiving this information. You follow what I'm saying? So it doesn't yeah. make sense you clicking all the box because you only can put one name and one address for that letter to be generated. Great question. Awesome. Yeah, that was um, did you have another question, Love? Yeah, I, I noticed something on the disputing tab uh, on the bottom of it. I don't know if it's just with the pro or not. Uh, it has, when you scroll all the way down to add new account, what, what would that be used for? Is that, is that something just for? So if you're, let's say your client, um, that's a great question. Let's say your client had, a, you're saying all the way at the bottom of here, right? So hold on. Let yes, me... when you, when, yeah, when you scroll all the way down, it, it just has a blank tab. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, it, it, says, it says add new. Hold on. Because, you know, I'm a visual teacher. OK, y'all, because I got vintage eyes. Don't judge my life, y'all. <laughs> judge my life. Hold on. OK, so right here. If Oh, so ooh, pause. What? Oh, yeah. I'm going to answer your question first. So if your client came to you and said that there was something new that they saw populated between when you had the conversation to them and or after like and now you're going through the file you can add it here if it's showing up so that's if like they get a pop-up this new collection has been added on on um, credit karma or something of that nature you would have the ability to add the credit card information what's the date reported what's the last activity so that it can then be generated in the pool awesome. because again okay. if you're let's say again with me let's say the client comes in on the first Credit Karma sends them an alert on the third that a new account has been activated. I'm not sending out my first letter until the fourth. Because yeah, they have the right not, to yeah, cancel. It's not going to update. Yeah, it's not going to update. Until Correct. Next because month. we're only pulling every 35 days. So this gives us the ability to go ahead and make that adjustment. 
Great oh, question. Wow. Hold on. Let me go away. So this is the yellow I was talking about, y'all. See, I be knowing what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Time, okay. This is the little yellow icon that says here, warning, although this account contains late payments, removing it may affect the client's uh, affect the client due to the amount of late payments or the age on the account. So okay. if we are removing something, we have to be very clear. This was before we got the late payment verbiage letter. So this is why this was here. We now have a late payment verbiage letter. So you do not have to be alarmed with this, but this would be something that you would still have to select on where it's impacting them, right? So just to kind of give you... So this one, this late payment was back in 2017. It's not going to affect the client anymore because they've earned back the late payments because your late payment only Im Im impacts you within a 24-month window. Oh. So when it comes to this, they were late in July and August of 2017. We're now in 2024, but they've, they've paid this account off by 2020. So this is not something that I would necessarily bother with. Because yes, they had a hiccup, but now they're trying, they've are they earned back the points and they have paid the account off. So why, why are we worried about it, right? So that's how I would look at it when we're looking through the profile. Um, but that was a great question. So let me go back over here. Any other questions, guys? So this is what you do every Monday? You help? Okay. Yep, Monday, Wednesdays for the... Uh, general and thursdays for the pro okay we are here dipping in the doing together i gotta go back and look and see what mine is because um i mean everything just came to a halt and mm -hmm. i don't know i just i'm just gonna get back with them and figure out what's going on not a problem not a problem. And the question that I had in the chat was, is there a way that we that you can send us the recording? So if you go to the community, you can click on the Dispute Panda Live button. And guess what? All the information is there for you to see, dip and do. OK. Also, we are on the U of the tubes, the tubes of the U, and you can see the information there. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please don't forget that my information is available in the chat to book a one on one. Also, I have a wonderful course that is um, going to be going live. So if you guys want to be a part of the two-day boot camp, that's going to be covering my flow, my process. I'm going to drop it in the chat. You guys are more than welcome to sign up for the two-day boot camp that's coming. It does give you accessibility to the recordings. And that way, when you guys come into the live chat, we are answering questions, we're diving in, we're doing the workbook, and we're talking about what you guys got to implement. So if you guys want to be a part of the boot camp, please, please, please go ahead and click on that. It is my pleasure to support. Other than that, do you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments before I let you guys go? Uh, are you going to be able to send this recording link out? No, not the recording link, but the recording will be available in the community, and it's also going to be available on YouTube. Great question. You can watch the replay on YouTube. Any uh, other questions? You don't put my face on YouTube. I didn't comb my hair. You look great. You look great. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry. You look like a whole snack, as my daughter would say. <laughs> David, I hope you ain't put the other video up there because I was acting crazy that day. Okay, y'all don't come. Don't come for me. I was looking crazy. No, no, I got, I got you. Don't worry. Because I was looking crazy, okay? I was talking <laughs> with my husband that day, y'all. Y'all should have came to this episode, okay? No, I'm just joking. But, but when, but when y'all are here, if you click the visit or our YouTube, you get to go ahead and see that information. You can also see the past events. And David alleges that he ain't put the stuff out there. I don't know what, what he did. I hope he did. Because I was acting up that night. And my computer was acting crazy. Uh, but no, I really thank you guys for coming. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please, please, please feel free to let us know. And we will see you again on Wednesday if you guys have no other questions. Any other questions? No? no? Thank you for your um, words of wisdom. It is my pleasure. And thank you guys for being the best part of Dispute Panda. I hope you guys have an amazing week. And I will catch y'all back here on Wednesday. Bye. Bye.